Alex J. Belkey, United States Army, retired. Dr. Yenino Bitru. Petty Officer Second Class Chris Romeo Bashundit, United States Navy. Carrie R. Blackburn. Colonel Canfield D. Boone, United States Army. Mary Jane Booth. Donna M. Bowen. Alan P. Boyle. Bernard C. Brown II. Petty Officer Third Class Christopher L. Burford, United States Navy. Captain Charles F. Burlingame III, United States Navy Reserve, retired. Petty Officer Third Class Daniel M. Caballero, United States Navy. Sergeant First Class Jose O. Calderon Olmedo, United States Army. Suzanne M. Kelly. Angeline C. Carter. Sharon A. Carver. William E. Caswell. Sergeant First Class John J. Chada, United States Army, retired. Rosa Maria Chapa. David M. Charleboy. Sarah M. Clark. Julian T. Cooper. Asia S. Cottom. Lieutenant Commander Eric A. Cranford, United States Navy. Ada M. Davis. James D. Debonier. Captain Gerald F. DeCanto, United States Navy. Rodney Dickens. Lieutenant Colonel Jerry D. Dickerson, United States Army. Eddie A. Dillard. Petty Officer First Class Johnny Doctor Jr., United States Navy. Captain Robert E. Dolan, Jr., United States Navy. Commander William H. Donovan, United States Navy. <laughs> Lieutenant Commander Charles A. Draws III, United States Navy, retired. Commander Patrick Dunn, United States Navy.
Petty Officer First Class Edward T. Earhart, United States Navy. Barbara G. Edwards. Lieutenant Commander Robert R. Elseth, United States Navy Reserve. Charles S. Falkenberg. And his wife, Leslie A. Whittington. And their two children, Dana Falkenberg and Zoe Falkenberg. Petty Officer 3rd Class Jamie L. Fallon, United States Navy. J. Joseph Ferguson. Amelia V. Fields. Gerald P. Fisher. Darlene E. Flagg. And her husband, Rear Admiral Wilson F. Flagg, United States Navy Reserve, retired. Petty Officer Second Class Matthew M. Flacco, United States Navy. Sandra N. Foster. First Lieutenant Richard P. Gabriel, United States Marine Corps, retired. Captain Lawrence D. Getzfred, United States Navy. Cortez Gee. Brenda C. Gibson. Colonel Ronald F. Galinsky, United States Army, retired. Ian J. Gray. Diane Hale McKinsey. Stanley R. Hale. Carolyn B. Hemmen. Michelle M. Heidenberger. Sheila M. S. Hine. Petty Officer First Class Ronald J. Hemingway, United States Navy. Major Wallace Cole Hogan, Jr., United States Army. Staff Sergeant Jimmy I. Holy, United States Army, retired. Angela M. Houts. Brady K. Howell. Peggy M. Hurt. Lieutenant Colonel Stephen N. Highland, Jr., United States Army. <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Robert J. Heimel, United States Air Force, retired. <laughs> Sergeant Major Lacey B. Ivory, United States Army. Brian C. Jack. Beep. 
Stephen D. Jacoby. <phone rings> Lieutenant Colonel Dennis M. Johnson, United States Army. <phone rings> Judith L. Jones. <phone rings> Anne C. Judge. Brenda Kegler. Chandler R. Keller. Yvonne E. Kennedy. Norma Cruz Khan. Karen Ann Kincaid. <phone rings> Lieutenant Michael S. Lamana, United States Navy. <phone rings> David W. Laycheck. <phone rings> Dong Chul Lee. Jennifer Lewis. And her husband, Kenneth E. Lewis. Samantha L. Lightborn Allen. Major Stephen V. Long, United States Army. James T. Lynch, Jr. Terrence M. Lynch. Petty Officer, Second Class, Nahaman Lyons IV, United States Navy. Shelley A. Marshall. Teresa M. Martin. Ada L. Masonacker. Lieutenant Colonel Dean E. Matson, United States Army. Lieutenant General Timothy J. Maud, United States Army. Robert J. Maxwell. Renee A. May. Molly L. McKenzie. Dora Marie Menchica. Patricia E. Mickley. Major Ronald D. Milam, United States Army. Gerard P. Moran, Jr. Odessa B. Morris. Petty Officer First Class, Brian A. Moss, United States Navy. Teddington H. Moy. Lieutenant Commander, Patrick J. Murphy. United States Navy Reserve. Christopher C. Newton. Khan Nock 
Nguyen. Petty Officer Second Class Michael A. Noeth, United States Navy. Barbara K. Olson. Ruben S. Ornado. Diana B. Pedro. Lieutenant Jonas M. Panic, United States Navy Reserve. Major Clifford L. Patterson, Jr., United States Army. Robert Penninger. Robert R. Ploger III. And his wife, Zandra F. Ploger. Lieutenant Darren H. Pontell, United States Navy Reserve. Scott Powell. Captain Jack D. Punches, United States Navy, retired. Petty Officer First Class, Joseph J. Pysier, Jr., United States Navy. Lisa J. Rains. Deborah A. Ramser. Rhonda Sue Rasmussen. Petty Officer First Class Marsha D. Ratchford, United States Navy. Martha M. Reski. Todd H. Rubin. Cecilia E. Lawson Richard. Edward V. Rowenhorst. Judy Rowlett. Sergeant Major Robert E. Russell, United States Army, retired. Chief Warrant Officer William R. Ruth, United States Army Reserve. Charles E. Sabin, Sr. Marjorie C. Salamone. John P. Sammartino. Colonel David M. Scales, United States Army. Commander Robert A. Schlegel, United States Navy. Janice M. Scott. Lieutenant Colonel Michael L. Selves, United States Army, retired. Marion H. Serva. Commander Dan F. Schenauer, United States Navy. Antoinette M. Sherman. Diane 
M. Simmons. And her husband, George W. Simmons. Donald D. Simmons. Cheryl D. Sincock. Chief Petty Officer Greg H. Smallwood, United States Navy. <phone rings> Lieutenant Colonel Gary F. Smith, United States Army, retired. <phone rings> Mary Ray Sopper. <phone rings> Robert Spiesman. Patricia J. Stotts. Edna L. Stevens. Norma Lang Sturley. Sergeant Major Larry L. Strickland, United States Army. Hilda E. Taylor. Lieutenant Colonel Kip P. Taylor, United States Army. Leonard E. Taylor. Sandra C. Taylor. Sandra D. T. Lieutenant Carl W. T. P. United States Army, retired. Sergeant Tamara C. Turman, United States Army. <phone rings> Lieutenant Commander Otis V. Tolbert, United States Navy. <phone rings> Staff Sergeant Willie Q. Troy, United States Army, retired. Lieutenant Commander Ronald J. Vock, United States Navy Reserve. <phone rings> Lieutenant Colonel Karen J. Wagner, United States Army. <phone rings> Meta L. Fuller Waller. Specialist Chin Sun Pak Wells, United States Army. <phone rings> Staff Sergeant Madeline A. White, United States Army. <phone rings> Sandra L. White. <phone rings> Ernest M. Wilshire. Lieutenant Commander David L. Williams, United States Navy. Major Dwayne Williams, United States Army. Chief Petty Officer Marvin Roger Woods, United States Navy, retired. Captain John D. Yemnicki, Senior, United States Navy, retired. Vicky Yancey. Petty Officer Second Class Kevin W. Yoakum, United States Navy. 
Chief Petty Officer Donald M. Young, United States Navy. Edmund G. Young, Jr. Lisa L. Young. Shu Yin Young. And her husband, Yu Guang Zheng. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation. Would you please join me in prayer? God of all creation and the giver of life, we give thanks for the bountiful blessings you've bestowed upon the United States of America. The very freedoms that we so often take for granted, the leaders both nationally as well as those who lead and serve throughout the various levels of government, for the peacekeepers and those who serve to uphold law and order. We are a truly blessed nation. We pause on this anniversary to remember those who perished on that fateful day in 2001. We remember their names, their dreams, the families here today that represent them, and the countless many others whose lives were tragically disrupted and destroyed by their loss. We remember the emergency responders, more than 400 police, 340 firefighters, and nearly 7,000 military service members that gave of themselves in service to our country. We remember our country's leadership and all of their efforts to ensure that we would never again face another deadly attack of that magnitude. 
As we finish the 23rd year since that day, we recall the 23rd Psalm that even though we walk through the valley of a shadow of death, we will fear no evil. May we never forget that day. May we honor those who died needlessly as well as those who stood heroically on behalf of the wounded and the hurting. In your precious and holy name I pray. Would you please join me in a moment of silence and remembrance of the lives lost on that very minute on September 11th, 2001. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, General C.Q. Brown, Jr., Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Good morning. As we stand here on this somber day, I reflect on the words by poet Lawrence Binion best remembered for his World War I poem, The Fallen, For the Fallen, which said, they shall not grow old as we are left to grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Today we gather in the solemn shadow of the Pentagon towering symbol of our nation's unyielding strength. We gather to remember them. We gather to acknowledge the heroes whose courage illuminated the darkest hours. And we gather to honor the families who have borne the deepest loss, carrying an unimaginable weight for the past 23 years. Our nation, this building, and the lives of everyone here were scarred that day by an act or horrific violence. Yet, in the face of adversity, it also became a testament to the unyielding spirit, the enduring power of unity, a testament to our perseverance and to our resilience as a nation. Today, we gather to remember the day, the loss, and the determination. The day, a Tuesday 23 years ago, the Pentagon awoke to a day like any other. But at 9.37 a.m., the routine of the morning was shattered by the explosion of fire and steel. As hijacked American Airlines Flight 77 was flown into the west wall of the Pentagon, those there on the day spoke of the acrid smell of fire, the gray smoke that permeated its way through the corridors and across the building. But many noted an absence of panic, despite the horror, shock, and confusion. Through the chaos and terror arose a focused calm among the people trained, the people there, trained military and civilian professionals, dedicated to helping the wounded, dedicated to maintaining the mission, as families waited for a call to hear that their loved one 
was okay. Some of those families never received the call. Flight 77 had departed that morning at 8.20, bound for Los Angeles. Five children were on board. Three of them, Rodney Dickens, Asian Compton, and Bernard Brown. They were on their way to explore California's Channel Islands with National Geographic. A special trip recognizing their standout performance as students and celebrating their fight features that laid ahead. Two sisters, Zoe and Dana Falkenberg, were flying with their parents, excited to start a new life adventure in Australia. But at 937, those children, along with 54 other passengers and crew, had their life's journey end just a few hundred yards from where we now stand. And with them, 125 sailors, soldiers, and civil servants, people who had committed years of their lives in service of our country, people who had gone to work that day not knowing their service would end in the ultimate sacrifice. Yet amid the destruction, something profound emerged, a demonstration of determination. It was the courage of those who ran toward the danger, who chose not to flee, but to help, to save, that provided a light in a time of darkness. In the 9-11 Commission's report, in the section covering the Pentagon's response, it is aptly titled, Heroism and Horror. It discusses the mix of local, state, and federal entities that work together to contain the fire tend to the wounded, and keep the mission going. What it does not discuss were the countless acts of bravery that went unseen and unrecorded, the calm determination of those who remained at their posts. There was fear. Yes, but that fear was tempered by an unyielding resolve to protect, to defend, and to serve. Amidst the sadness and the rage, the people who remained that day chose to honor those who had fallen by coming together to protect and to serve. There are many accounts of people running back into the burning rubble, pulling people to safety, only to go back in and save more. Leaders who guided their teammates to safety, navigating the hot ash and smoke. Others had to be restrained by security to stop them from going back in once again, because their blind instinct was to run into the flames with no regard for their own safety to support those that were still in danger. And while destruction and rescues continued on the west side, the rest of the building continued to persevere, relocating watch stations, establishing communications, and preparing for, for potential follow-on attacks. Even as this side of the Pentagon collapsed into rubble, this building kept the mission going because of the grit and determination the people there that day. So today, we gather to support each other, to do what we can to comfort one another, to honor the sacrifice made by too many, and to fulfill our sacred duty to remember. We remember the day. We will remember the determination. But most importantly, we will remember the loss, the loss here at the Pentagon, the loss at the World Trade Center, and the loss in the fields of Pennsylvania. The sons, daughters, mothers, fathers, brothers, and sisters who are lost in that day, but will never be forgotten. God bless our fallen. God bless all of you. And may God bless the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd J. Austin III. General Brown, thank you for those moving words. Family members of the fallen, survivors and first responders, our outstanding troops, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you all for being here. I'm honored to join you once more on this day of memory and resolve. 
And on behalf of the entire Department of Defense, let me offer my deepest condolences to the families, the friends, and the loved ones of the 184 souls who were stolen from us 23 years ago today here at the Pentagon and on Flight 77. We have repaired the damage to this building, but we cannot repair the damage to your hearts. No words can take away your grief. No amount of time can make sense of the worst terrorist attack in American history. And I know that for those whose lives were changed forever on 9-11, it can feel as if more and more Americans are returning to normal life on each new September 11th. But not here, not at the Pentagon, because we remember. The men and women of the Department of Defense remember and we always will. Every September, we gather here near 184 memorial benches. But the troops and the personnel of this department don't need to come to this space to remember 911. You see, we don't just work near a memorial, we work in a memorial. Every day we serve in the only surviving building struck by Al Qaeda on 9-11. And every day we carry a powerful sense of purpose. And that's why there's a piece of the wreckage from 9-11 on display outside my inner office. For every visitor and every teammate to see. It is a constant reminder that 9-11 isn't a part of our distant history. It is entwined in the department's mission and it's captured in the stories of those who are here. We continue to honor the beloved teammates who we lost, the first responders who raced towards the flames, the families who humble us with their resilience, and the survivors who continue to inspire us all. I'm thinking today of two sisters, Patty Mickley and Kathy Dillaber. In the fall of 2001, Patty worked in the Defense Intelligence Agency, and Kathy worked for the Department of the Army. And on 9-11, they began their day as they so often did, with a morning talk in the Pentagon courtyard. And Patty's daughter had graduated from the Pentagon daycare center a week earlier. And she had just had her first day of kindergarten. And so Patty told her younger sister all about it. And then they went their separate ways. That was their last conversation. Kathy was devastated by Pat Patty's murder. But she channeled her anguish into service by working with the Pentagon Memorial Fund. And Kathy says that was a tie that kept me here. And we are grateful that Kathy is here with us today. 
after 9-11, the staff, the family members, and the children of the Pentagon Daycare Center donated a small plaque in the Pentagon courtyard. It honors Patty and Shelley Marshall, another DIA teammate slain on 9-11 and her young children were at the daycare center that morning. Now, Shelley Marshall's daughter, Chandler, is now a lawyer who has helped to care for Afghan refugees. And her son, Drake, is now training at Fort Liberty to become a special forces soldier. They're both here today with their father, Don, who raised them with such love. And the plaque in the P Pentagon courtyard for Patty McLee and Shelley Marshall reads, they are not gone who live in the hearts of others. They are not gone who live in the hearts of others. After 9-11, fear turned to resolve, and resolve turned to action and to service. And proof of, for proof of that, we can, we can look to the life of Kevin Schaefer. On the morning of 9-11, Kevin was a lieutenant on duty in the Pentagon's Navy Command Center. As he watched the news from New York, he was knocked to the ground by the force of a fireball. Nearly half of Kevin's body was terribly burned. But somehow, he crawled through the rubble toward the rescue. And for three months, Kevin fought hard in the burn unit just to survive, and he still carries the scars of 9-11. You know, Al-Qaeda's attack on the Pentagon ended Kevin's service to the Navy, but not to our country. Kevin thought hard about what to do next, and he raised his hand to serve once more, this time as a civilian. In 2003, he was selected as one of the professional staff members on the 9-11 Commission. And at his unremarkable government desk, in his unremarkable government cubicle, Kevin chose to put up the pictures of the 9-11 hijackers. And on the commission, he worked to shed truth and clarity on the evil that those 19 terrorists chose to commit. In the wake of 9-11, Americans like Kevin and Kathy turned grief into grace and agony into resolve. And stories like theirs remind us of what we've lost. But they also remind us of who we are. We are the United States of America. We do not bend to terror. And in uncertain times, our compass remains our Constitution. This department does not just defend our country and our citizens, it also defends America's founding values of democracy, freedom, and liberty under law. And those beliefs have inspired generations of patriots to step forward and to wear the cloth of our nation. And they still do. You know, only about 6% of today's troops were in uniform on 9-11. And some of our troops 
about 21% of our troops were born after 9-11. And some of our troops enlisted or were commissioned after 9-11 as our country came together in sorrow and determination. And others joined years later, spurred on by an enduring spirit of service. And we are profoundly grateful to them all. We thank the military families who make their service possible. And today, of all days, I want to especially thank my fellow veterans of the wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. In the memory of every American soldier, sailor, airman, marine, and public servant who lost their lives in the wars that America fought after 9-1-1, we bow our heads. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States military remains the greatest fighting force on Earth. And not just because of our might, but because of our people. And we will always strive to carry forward the values of the teammates who we lost here 23 years ago. Their memory is our mission. And their families are our families, too. You have endured endless sorrow and unimaginable pain with unimaginable strength. We stand with you today and every day. And we rededicate ourselves to living up to the example and the goodness of your loved ones with a spirit of shared duty with deep love for our country, and with an unbreakable devotion to our democracy. They are not gone who live in the hearts of others. May the memory of the falling, fallen be a blessing. May God provide comfort to all who mourn. May God protect our troops, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of God Bless America and remain standing for the benediction.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that as we leave this place, we never leave your presence. May your spirit continue to bring healing to our families, comfort to those who suffer, hope to our nation, and peace to our world. Humbly we ask that as you continue to grant us opportunities to cherish the freedoms and blessings and liberties that we enjoy every day in the United States of America. In your precious and holy name I pray, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for joining us this morning. The Pentagon Memorial, the Pentagon Memorial Chapel, and the Navy Reflection Room are open until 12 p.m.